That's perfectly cool. I can't guarantee it's gonna be long. Probably, in my mind, I said 10 minutes. I said 10 minutes, but you guys know, I'm long-winded. You gotta put pin it like I did. Put talking about anxiety with uh, whoever I am. So, first and foremost, if you guys deal with social anxiety, before we get started, if you deal with social anxiety, if you deal with anxiety at all, um, if you're an introvert and you want to maybe get out the house a little bit, or if you're a more extroverted person and you want, you have friends that have anxiety, this might be uh, a good chat to join right now. So I'll give you a few minutes uh, to text your people, let you know, hey, come on in here. This might be something worthwhile. It's free. So take advantage of the free stuff, you know. What's up, people? How's it going? Uh, I am Sylvester McNutt the third. That's my real name. No gimmicks. So we're about to talk about anxiety. So like I told my channel over here, these are my guys right here. <laughs> like I told my guys, if you know anybody that has it, suffers, or you're a friend that's trying to help someone, assist someone through it, definitely tell them to jump on here. So let's start with this. And I don't know if you guys can see. There, there, there we can see now. Horatio. What's good? Why do you feel like you have social anxiety? Oh, bro, how, how to answer that? I feel like I have social anxiety because in social situations, I'm, you know, very uncomfortable. So I think that's the top. Yeah. I mean, listen, listen. I know everybody gets uncomfortable with social situations, right? But I feel like my my discomfort is like at a at a higher level than some people, you know? And okay. So let me ask you this. You said you feel like your discomfort is at a higher level than other people. Yeah, How do you like, know that? I don't know. I you feel don't know. like. So you're comparing, right? Mm -hmm. Is it possible? I just answer this question for me. Is it possible that you comparing your experience to other people's experience that you can't effectively measure? Could that cause you more suffering and could that cause you more social anxiety? Is that possible? It's possible that it contributes. Okay. So let me ask you this. Is it possible that if you just said, hey, this social discomfort that you described, that was a word you used, yeah. is normal, could that help you? If you literally would feel it. If I felt that it was and normal. You would tell your, no, you would tell yourself. You feel it, the discomfort, the anxiety, the, the you know, you start sweating under here, mm -hmm. or you get hot, whatever. If you told yourself and truly believed that it's normal, would that help you? Mm, if I told myself that? Yeah, if you're like, I don't hey, think this, that this helped me because... Maybe not right now because yeah. you've been conditioned. Because I feel like I won't feel normal. You know, you know, I feel normal when I'm no, that's not, not I'm uncomfortable. Asking. That's not what no, I'm, I'm asking. Just, I'm explaining, like, okay. I, the, the answer to your question... No, I don't think that'll make me feel like, like, help me. That just saying it, it'd be more of a, a long term um, experience with trying to convince myself to, that it's normal. How do you try to convince yourself that? I don't know, probably. Is it possible that you could try to convince yourself by telling yourself that from the beginning? Even if it didn't quote unquote feel right or feel normal or feel natural, is it possible that by telling yourself that eventually you could be that way? Is that possible? I think by telling myself that that would probably be one way, but it will have to take other steps as well. Okay, let's stay here. Let's not worry about other steps. Yeah, so that would be something that could contribute to, to, you know, decreasing some anxiety, you know, decreasing the effects of it, basically what it is. All right, in my, in my Dare Queen journey book, one of the things I wrote about is called, uh, it's called, uh, what is it called? It's called self-hypnosis. Mm-hmm. Self-hypnosis is basically what Muhammad Ali did while he was training. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. He wasn't actually the greatest, but through his efforts and through the psychological retraining of his brain, he convinced himself that he was the greatest. And then he kept the efforts to match the sayings, and then he eventually became the quote-unquote greatest. Okay. I got to so say a comment. One, one second. So what I'm saying is you've already said it's possible that you could like retrain your brain through self hypnosis. You could retrain your brain. I'm not saying change the feelings of anxiety, right? The feelings of the anxiety feelings are what, normal. Yeah, the feelings. What I'm saying is change. You can change the way you're describing it, which is prolonging the feeling, which is causing the suffering with the feeling. 
the feeling of anxiety is weird because like, oh it's shit, uncomfortable. Like, it's, like, it's like, what's well, going I know, on like, here? For me, weird is is a, a certain level, right? Discomfort is another level, but then it's it's a, it's a another a feeling worse than that, a little worse than that, like you mm-hmm. know. So I see people be nervous. You know, I know what nervousness look like on other people. You know, it looks like okay, the guy probably nervous. They calm down, cool. So me though, mm-hmm. my I, when I get nervous, my my, my body, you know, reacts. I feel like differently because I'm looking at other people. Again, you're comparing too. other people. Yeah, but I mean, that's just you like a natural. Like you can't. Okay, do, you can you ever go a life without ever comparing at all? You can, but you're suffering. So yeah. if we're suffering, we don't need to look at other people who are suffering because they're both they're suffering too. So I'm looking at my situation of suffering and their situation of suffering, and I'm trying to find some bliss or happiness in there. It's not going to happen. You can't look at other people's anxiety and compare it. I get anxiety. I get nervous. You know I do public speaking. Yeah. It doesn't look like I get nervous. No, no. I, I know everyone gets do. nervous. But I do. I have it. I'm I know everyone gets nervous. Everyone experiences anxiety. Right. And I experience anxiety. It, it's just it's another way, you know? you know? I'm not saying it's like a good thing or a bad thing. But I know like when I'm starting to feel uncomfortable, mm-hmm. I feel like I, I got to remove myself from the situation. Because if I don't, like the longer I stay in it, I start the discomfort just, just goes, you know, gets gets worse. So now I, I can sit there. Why does it get worse? Is it, does it really get worse, or are it you feels di- worse, or are you literally telling yourself it's getting worse? It feels worse. How's it? Is it? Is it okay? So I feel so, I literally okay, feel. So so worse. here's what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. I want you to open another eye, because right now you're only talking about a first person perspective. You're only talking about your perspective, and you're a mm-hmm. writer. You're a phenomenal writer. So what what writers can do is we can talk about a third person perspective. Right? That's what we're talking about when we talk about opening our third eye. Opening your third eye is the ability to see all perspectives, not just the experience that you're experiencing, but all perspectives. So what I want you to do is to objectively start to observe yourself. Don't just say, I have social anxiety. Don't just say, I feel this or I feel that. That's the thing. It's not. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I, you got to soak this in. Don't be so quick to respond because this right here is going to change your life, bro. Trust me. A thir- the third eye perspective, the third person perspective is that fly on the wall that's watching me and you. You have this experience with this conversation with me. I have this experience with you. The third eye is a person that sits there on that wall and watches with no bias, no judgment, and can just literally rely the information back. You're holding your phone. My phone's right here. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. You're describing as it gets worse. And you don't have to do that. It does not have to get worse. Well, and if it, I this is the last that. thing I'm going to say, then I'm going to let it go to you. And if it does get worse, what I'm telling you is you have to stop looking at it through the first person perspective as the only perspective. That third person perspective from the wall may help you. Because if we're at a bar right now and there's a bunch of beautiful women around and people we don't know, we may get nervous. But that third person perspective from the wall will look at you and see that your environment hasn't changed at all. You've been there for an hour. Nothing has changed. No threats are around you. But you may not be able to see that in your perspective. You might have to look outside of yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm not completely against it. Nothing. You know, I'm always open to points of views, right? The thing, what I, basically how I want to explain is, when I'm in a situation, an uncomfortable situation, it's like, um, I don't, like the comfort doesn't get better, you know, it doesn't get better. And even though I want it, if I wanted to get better, I sit there and I could try to calm myself down. Maybe I just go to the bathroom real quick and tell myself, you know, this situation isn't that bad. I'm telling myself the situation isn't that bad. It's people, humans, nobody's going to kill me, nobody's going to hurt me, right? Mm-hmm. And but it's like I feel differently than what I'm thinking though. I feel okay, that's fair. different, you know. Like like now, like being live, I don't. I just feel you know uncomfortable. You being feel live. uncomfortable live. right now. I feel I never Why? go live. I never go live unless I'm going live with somebody. Okay, you know, because I'm not the only one. The main the main that's fine. person to look. No at. judgment. So when I'm in um, an uncomfortable situation, you know, I know I'm uncomfortable because I start feeling it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can tell myself it's okay. Relax, chill. So it's, it's not is, that bad. Is it okay though? What? Like you're on live right now. Is it is it okay? Is it what you mean okay? Like, like is uh, it okay? Like are you being hurt? Are you being damaged? Nah, I just feel uncomfortable. Just, but are you okay? I'm alive. So, so you're okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm alright. I'm alright. Let me take it to you. See, look, 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 that's my, that's, my that's not wrong. 
You want to go take a drink and you're judging yourself like it's wrong or something. It's not. No. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Hold on, let me put this down. Right, it's perfectly okay to be uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable all the time. Have you seen the people in this world? They make me uncomfortable. And you know what I do? Deal with it. I keep moving. I keep my life moving. So I guess... And that's you, right? That's you. I think, yeah, that's me. And yeah. you know, we don't need to compare. But what is it that you care about the most? Well, I care like, about my comfort. The most, most thing I care about in the world is my comfort level. Okay. So when I'm in a situation where I don't feel comfortable, I lose the desire to want to be in a situation. All right, hold on. When you're in a situation where you don't feel comfortable, yeah, you lose a desire to want to be there to, to be wanna, in the situation. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good quote. Too. Yeah. So then I like like first thing I'll probably do is. Try to relax, you know, try to relax. And I could I just go through the method of trying to convince myself that, you know, I'm, I'm good. Like, you know, and that doesn't work, though, right? No, like it starts. Get, I start feeling worse, like feeling you start feeling, start so feeling worse. trying to relax makes it worse. Trying yeah, trying to make myself relax when you're uncomfortable. Yeah. OK, it's been it, and, and it the reason I'm work. asking so I can make sure I understand the how the my connection. works, like yeah, how, how it's okay, working. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so you feel uncomfortable. Mm hmm. You you, you uncomfortable. identify the uncomfortableness, right? Then you're like, okay, let me try to relax. Let me chill. Let do me chill. you physically like sit back or take a shower? I probably on. do something like this. You cross your arm, okay. or I go to the bathroom because like it get hot, like I get hot. Like if you're at like the that. bar or something. Yeah. Okay. Or okay. or let's say like I take start taking my jacket off. Okay. Or I just drink even if I'm not thirsty. Like almost like a reaction. You yes, like. it's a reaction. Okay. Like, and I find myself reacting to it. Like so. You're and like, then right, I think about yeah. Then I'm like, okay, let me stop. Then I then it, discomfort starts increasing. Okay. Then I try to relax, but now. I lose the desire to want to even be there. Okay. So now I'm like, okay, now I just want to leave. So now you're like, all right, let me get my Uber. Yeah, now I don't I'm even see, home. now I'm not having fun. Like, I don't feel fun, you know, so now I just want to, like, remove myself, you know. What brings it on? You say, when you say you feel uncomfortable, what is creating it? Is it literally just the presence of people? Like, what, like, help me understand. Because you got to understand, for me, I've been out with you in a lot of social situations. It's, honestly, this and is you're, what it is. you're good with me. Yeah. Let so me tell when you you're not me, with me, like, let's, what let's is explain. It? All right. When I'm when I'm by myself, but I'm in a group of people I don't know, I feel. I mean, I don't know. It's just the, the thought of being around other humans just make me feel some type of way, right? Okay. But when I'm around around my homie, you get the attention. You get all of that attention. They focus on you. I could just sit there quiet, like my comfort. I'm comfortable. All right. Nobody's pay, nobody got to pay attention to me. I don't have to talk to nobody. I'm just chilling. I could just observe. But then you do though. You jump in. You but talk. I jump in on my 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 choice. You get me? I jump in after a while, and that's when after you've done kind of you know broke talk, the ice. Broke the ice with the crowd. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody. So laughing. is that? And it takes me a while. To is get that to the that. major problem? Uh -oh. Like yeah, decline that. So it, it takes a while for me to get like after you do your little thing, getting entertained. So is that the major thing? Is it the breaking the ice? Is it once you break the ice, are you good? Not yet. Nah, it take me a little time to warm. So to you got to break the ice, mm -hmm. then you got to do the like getting to know you phase, mm -hmm. and then at some point in the getting to know you phase, you're good. It's the anxiety starts coming down. It come. It starts to come down. Yeah. So I think for Austin, it sounds like this with this introspection right here, we got to figure out the break the ice stage for you. I think that's the root cause of it. Yeah, I don't break because ice. once you break the ice, you're a phenomenal. You yep. have you you have the social skills in all settings, all situations, whether it's small group, big group, whether it's random people we meet, whether it's people we may have known beforehand, like a warm introduction. So it sounds like it's breaking the ice. We can work on that meeting. The initial just, meet, just breaking the ice, like, hey, I'm. But it's, it's basically <laughs> like when you said, the, as far as controlling the situation, when you first meeting somebody, I have zero control over the environment and everything. Going but you down. think you do? You tr you try to There's act no like control. you have control, and you don't. That's also where the anxiety comes from. You try to act like you have more control over the breaking the ice, and you don't. So that's simple. That's easy. This is phenomenal. All we gotta do is get breaking the ice strategies. Which is easy. I know how to do that. The, like, do I want to break the ice? Like, do you want to be uncomfortable forever? I don't want to be uncomfortable. Okay, man. well, I think you want to break the ice then. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy, man. Someone says you two collab on a book. No, nah, I don't like the way he writes. I don't like the way this guy <laughs> writes, man. <laughs> I hit him up. I'm like, bro, 
Can I can I get a shout out? Can I get my words in your page? Nah, man. Nah, nah. nah. I, I don't even get <laughs> nah. hit up no more. Bro. Nah, man. Nah, I, my fans don't need to see your work. You you don't know how to write. Like, all right, that's cool. So I wonder what people say about their anxiety. What I like to get people to understand is um, anxiety. I, I believe anxiety just works differently for everybody. You know, like our body reacts to it differently. You know, um, let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, let's see. You can only control feeling your attitude. Feeling sick. Like some, yeah, some people start feeling That's sick. Right. Okay, for example. I would collab on a book with him. I was just joking. Yeah, yeah. So we, that, we actually have some stuff in the work that we've worked on um, over the last few years. I guess it would just be a matter of us really just sitting down and like it would be a matter of our energies aligning at the same point and having like a common purpose at the same time and just saying, hey, like let's put this book together because we do both work extremely hard at writing. He's working on two books right now. I just got my fifth one out. So we could we could do it, but it's one of those things you don't want to force. Like we all want to see a Drake and Weekend album, but you just you can't force it. Like the energy, the creative juices just have to align at the right time. Like right now we're recording this for my YouTube and I'm gonna put it on my YouTube where we've tried to collaborate before on videos, but it just it was a too forceful. So this is like a natural thing, and I truly believe in like natural organic things happening. I don't believe in forcing anything. That's my thought on that. As we listen to more life. If you guys are, are feeling this conversation about anxiety, this 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 introspection, this this um, on, vulnerability, gotta, throw some hearts on there so we know, man. Let us know if you're feeling this. How do you ignore so he's talking about how do you know the symptoms? How do you ignore, ignore the, the symptoms? symptoms? So let me explain like what happens. Like, I, I didn't say ignore anything. I know, I know, I know. Right. So you know. There we go. Give us those hearts. Let so us when exi- So when you start to feel the, um, that fear kicking in, the anxiety kicking in, your body starts reacting to it. Sometimes you panic and it, you start getting sick. So it's, it's hard. It's, sometimes it gets hard to just sit there and try to calm yourself down because you 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 physically feel sick or your body is shaking. You start sweating. And it's just it's a very uncomfortable feeling overall. She said exactly what I was thinking. She said, I think it's okay to be uncomfortable sometimes, as long as it's not forever and as long as you're not in danger. We can't always be comfortable. I love that. Mm-hmm. Why is it good to be uncomfortable? I'll answer that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check and see what you guys were saying. Um, why is it good to be uncomfortable? Or I got something. Too. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me see. Let me see. You can see that? No. I mean, he's taking... He's, I can't really see it. He's talking about coping mechanisms. We can't use that shit when your anxiety is not something you can't control. And I get it because... um, like, the Wait, what's the rest of it saying? Um, you think we don't say... Basically saying you think we don't already tell ourselves this and try okay. to use these coping so, mechanisms. So, so here's the deal. You're a freshman in high school and you want to play college football. But you're not good enough right now. And you're not even good enough for varsity right now. So you have the victim mindset and you say, oh, I'm too small. I'm not fast enough. I'm not big enough. I can't jump high enough. Coach is telling me to come practice. Coach is telling me to lift weights, but it's not working right now. See, what you have with that statement is called the victim mindset. And that mindset will never produce anything. It is very uncomfortable where you are right now. Yes, I'm talking about coping mechanisms because to deal with pain, you need to learn how to cope with it. To deal with a situation that's uncomfortable like he's talking about, you got to do exactly what he's doing right now by being willing to jump online, to talk with me, and have a very vulnerable uh, conversation, which is very uncomfortable. But to go from that freshman that's not good enough to that college person that has a scholarship you have to listen to the coach you got to take the training you got to put the work in nothing in life is easy so if you're not willing to be uncomfortable it's not you're going to just stay the same and what are you going to do complain about an uncomfortable situation or are you going to change it by getting different attitudes getting different perspectives taking different behaviors either way it's a choice you you choose to succeed or you choose to fail it's your choice which one do you want When someone wants to help me, I don't say, oh, that's not going to work for me. It might not work right now today, but if you know it's willing to work, I'm going to at least try because what I'm doing is not working. What I'm doing today is not working. So I have to try something different. So you got to have 
and, and everybody listen needs to understand this. There's only two mindsets you can have. The growth mindset and the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset does not fix problems. It stays fixed on the situation. Oh, whoa, it's me. My life sucks. I don't have enough. I'm not good enough. I'm bad. I'm not. A growth mindset says I'm going to take what I have right now and I'm going to work on this and I'm going to develop this and I'm going to get it better. A growth mindset says I can do it. Even though I don't know how, it's possible, which is why I asked him at the very beginning, is it possible? That's well, because I'm instilling the growth mindset in you that it is possible. I'm not saying you're going to do it right now. I'm not saying it's a light switch. It is a process, but it is possible. Yeah, I don't think it's impossible, you know, but I feel, I feel like it just takes steps. It takes it takes steps and time, dedication. And um, like you said, um, I guess put myself out there and also willing to except different perspectives you know i never i never feel like a perspective is is um necessarily right or wrong but it does help to talk about anxiety and it makes me feel less uncomfortable you every know? time because you're not the same person you were four years ago and you're not that person because you've been so open and so vulnerable with me about talking about it, about sharing the experience with me hey bro i don't feel good right now we gotta go like a couple years ago, hey, we gotta go. We gotta go. Bro. Every time we do a show, every, what I'm doing, what I'm doing in the room, I'm tearing myself up before every time we go on stage. Like, this this is a very, you know, as the show goes on, I begin to be, I begin to, you know, feel a little bit comfortable as the audience of interacts with us on stage. So, right. like what I was telling, what I was telling my friend earlier, like when I, if I was to do a show with my boy, I like the shows where. I'm not just speaking. I'm not just speaking to people because I'm not like a preacher. I'm not like a love guru. I'm not gonna fix anybody's relationship problem. I just like to share my perspective. So if I'm on stage sharing my perspective at a show, I want people in the audience to also share their perspective with me. That's why, like, I try my best to open up DMs and um, um, reply to Snapchat and everything because I don't do that. With and, and also my comment section, like, I read the comments because I enjoy everybody else's perspective on relationships because. I don't have all the answers and no one else has all the answers. So I like to share share what I think about relationships and also gain knowledge from what everybody else is sharing back at me. So if I'm at a show where I'm on stage, see, I feel a little bit comfortable right now. I think it's because you drink. When, I, <laughs> when I'm on stage, it just feels like I'm just giving myself. I'm giving myself to people and I'm talking about my experience on relationships and my thoughts and what I think can help, what I think doesn't help. But I want it back. You know, I want people to also talk back to me tell me how what what experiences you know they've, they've been through what have they learned teach me you know teach me things about relationships just like i want to like put things out there in the universe so in those settings where it's like an intimate you know like a, a few people around and we're talking about relationships then i feel good in those you know because i'm not the only one i'm not the center of attention that's what i don't like being the center the only one speaking you know so i'm cool with attention yeah, yeah as long as it's the right kind of attention like you know, I don't want people to know me like for a six pack abs or something like, you know, like, oh, yeah, that guy, he's got the best six pack. No, nah, I don't want to be known for that. I, I want to be known for exploring thoughts with people, exploring, like you say, exploring ideas, exploring concepts. You know, how do we my, like my number one thing is we all deal with pain. So how do we heal from it? That's the most important thing to me. How do we deal with the pain? How do we heal with it? Because to me, the happiness is the most important thing. I don't want to see people suffer. Like, I'm an empath. So when, when people close to me suffer, it hurts me. Like, if I hit you and I'm like, hey, bro, let's go out. And I know you can't go out because of something you're dealing with. I want to help you. I want to do whatever I can to help you. Because I want you to be able to go out. I don't want you to suffer at all. I want that pure happiness. See, you like, like, you asked me what what's the difference between when I'm by myself and when I'm hanging out with you, right? Mm -hmm. The difference is... When, when you know, you know, like, you know that I deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't force me into situations that I don't want to be in. True. And you know how to, like, control the crowd in a way that is easier for me. I feel comfortable enough to insert myself into the conversations and stuff. But some people don't know how to do that. You know, they say, just get over it. Or they say, snap out over it. Stop okay. overthinking. So, so I have those skills, right? You have that, those skills. That's skills that I've learned, right? That's skills that I've learned. But let me ask you this. Is that fair to me? And is that fair to other people to expect them? And I'm not saying you expect them to, right. but I'm just saying, is it fair to expect them to have those skills when they're just they I, like when they like you and they're just saying, hey, let's go get spaghetti, mm -hmm. and you are saying I'm not gonna go because of whatever reason? Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that's fair to them? Do you think that can be draining to them? I, it I could just, be if they like if they don't have the skills, they definitely or or understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, 
then it could be draining for them, but as well okay. as for me, because when I'm going into a situation like that, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not sure right. if they have the skills in right. that, and that's panic. Because I don't like, I don't know how people are going to take it when I'm uncomfortable and I just don't want to sit down anymore. I want to leave, or hmm. if I, you know, if I don't want to be in this group anymore and they're having so much fun, I don't like to ruin people's fun with my anxiety. So then that creates, and I start overthinking that, you know. So what if they can have their fun and you deal with, you know, your quote unquote anxiety and you're not ruining their fun? That's like, how it do works. You, That's like, how we do. do. You, like, do you have to be on their level? Like, if you say I run the crowd and I meet people and I break the ice, like, do you do you think you have to be doing that? Nah, I I don't feel like I got to do it at all. Okay. So that part of anxiety <laughs> is relieved. Okay. If me and you go out and hang out around the crowd, yeah, I don't gotta worry about ice breaking. I don't gotta <laughs> worry about controlling or anything. But what if they don't want to talk to me? What did they like? Remember when we were walking in Miami, and that girl was like, "You're Horatio Jones." Hey, she had no idea who I was. She didn't talk to me at all. What'd you do? You're like, "Oh, hey, yeah, you know, we just walk around the beach." But I, what I you, did, let me tell you what I did. Like Ten minutes. You let me tell cool. you what I did. Okay. When some when when people randomly like come talk to me and I'm around him and they're not talking to him, I mimic what you do to people. <laughs> like I'd be like, "Okay, I saw the Sylvester talk this way, so I talk, I talk. I'm like, okay, this works. It, it makes other people comfortable, and yeah. like you know, so when they get comfortable and be more." I guess open to me, you know, then I start relaxing a little bit. Okay, all right. I got so you. So I use some of those methods. I'm like, all right, I see my boy, how he talks in social situations. <laughs> you animate it. You, you bring everybody involved. Man, I'm, so just, I, I'm just myself, man. Yeah. Here's the thing. And, and this is for everybody on the chat right now. Like, <laughs> most people, I, don't, I can't say most because I don't know the percentage, but an overwhelming majority of people. Okay. All right. So. A overwhelming majority of people are not comfortable with who they are. So no matter how fucked up you are, no matter how fucked up you are, no matter how I fucked, know fucked I'm up not you the are, only fucked up no matter how fucked up you are, I'm no matter how fucked up I am, if you're just comfortable with it, if you just embrace it, other people are gonna think you have the most confidence. They're gonna think you're the greatest person because the the sexiest thing in the world is confidence. And men or women, confidence. That's what we all like. All of us, we all are programmed to like confident people. Why? Because confident people make us feel safe. They feel like they, we feel like they can entertain us. We they feel like they can control. lead us. They relieve, yeah. Yeah, right. you're like, oh my God, they're so confident. I'm, I'm cool. I got no worries. Trustworthy. I mean, you feel like you can yeah, trust them. Yeah, you feel like you can trust them because they're confident. Hey, what time is it? It's five o'clock. You said it confidently. That has to be what time it is. Where is this going? <laughs> is, we're going to be in a relationship. Okay, <laughs> cool. I trust you then because you're confident. I mean, it's the sexiest thing. So... You don't have to think that confidence comes from flawlessness. Hey, bro, this is this is a good quote right here. I feel like we should be writing some. You don't have to think that saying. confidence comes from flawlessness. Confidence comes from embracing your weaknesses. Woo! Now that's a quote right there, boy. Confidence also comes from going through a situation that you've been through that you panicked in, but believing that you're gonna make it through it the second time. Mm. Hey, hold on, I gotta write this down real quick. I have that in my book. That's why I remember. Oh, <laughs> you cheating. You cheating. It was in my book. So You're pulling out stuff from the book. All right. What did I say? Because I'm about to post that. Confidence. What did I say? Confidence does not come from flawlessness. It comes from what did I say. Accepting your weaknesses. Mm hmm. And being willing to stand up in them. I think I like that. That's a that's a quote right there. Oh, that's a quote right there, Horatio. Confidence does not come from flawlessness. It comes from accepting your weaknesses and being willing to stand up in them. <laughs> or should I say stand up in them no matter how dark they are? No, that's too that's too extra. That's too much. Embracing your weaknesses. What does it mean? What does it, it mean? Let me from, type this up. Let me type this up. Not accepting, embracing. Yeah. What does accepting. it mean? From embracing your weaknesses and being willing to stand up. Yes, I like that. Embracing, yeah. Okay, yeah, I said embracing. I said embracing. Okay. Hey, I like you guys, man. Okay, the question is what does it mean? And it's the last one. What does it mean to embrace your weaknesses? Okay, so. You want you gonna answer that? You want no, me? no. I'm okay. You. I'm what it means to embrace embrace your weaknesses. So here's the deal. There's all that we all know what we're. I'm not even gonna say we all know. Most of us know what we're good at. I'm good at communicating. 
I'm good at um, un- listening to people. I'm good at trying to understand people. Those are the things I'm good at. Mm-hmm. What I'm not good at, I'm not good at doing my laundry. I'll do my laundry. I won't fold my clothes. I'm horrible. It's an excuse that I make. It's, it's nothing other than an excuse. I'm not good at being totally silent because I love talking and I love being around people. So I like to interact. I'm not good at being completely silent. Uh, I'm not good at... Um, what am I not good at? Let me go since you're thinking. Yeah. I believe that I'm good at communicating okay. through typing, through writing. I'm, I'm, I'm calm and I'm able to process everything that's going on in my head when mm-hmm. I'm able to type it up and, um, you know, or write it down. Now, when it comes to communicating in person, the, my thoughts like kind of scatter. So it's hard to pick what way I want to say things and how I want to um, give the information. Mm-hmm. But I'm really good at listening to people's uh, feelings and what they and I'm, I'm, I'm able to feel what they feel and understand what they've been through. That's why I try to post things where I'm, I'm trying to be considerate of, of everybody's feelings involved, even if, even the wrong do, the wrongdoers feelings. I'm trying to. Yeah, because, you never try to offend anyone. Yeah, I don't want to offend writing. anyone. You try like, to just. Yeah, like yeah. if it's like if it's the if it's the guy that's doing wrong in a situation, I still want to try to, um, kind of pro- provide that extra perspective from him. You know, right. why is he doing wrong? Just so to people can out. benefit it. Yeah, just so. So people. here, so here's what it is. It's one self awareness. So this is how. What's the question? Um, how do you embrace your weakness? So step one is uh, self awareness, like we just did. We completely identify what we're good at, what we're not, what we're not good at, whether it's a big deal or a little deal. And then step two is completely accepting it, just completely accepting this is how I am, accepting it. Now, some people are gonna say, well, what if you accept it and it's you know a character flaw? If you accept it, then and only then can you actually change it, right? Because then you're not living in denial. I know I'm not good at laundry, so you know what? I can accept that, and now I can make a schedule. I can do my laundry every Sunday, and I, I can have Horatio hold me accountable for it, and I can work on it, and I can improve. So to in- embrace your weaknesses, have self-awareness, and then accept it. That's it. What about committing to it, committing to getting better if you feel like it's it's not something you're proud of, yeah. like something you want to get better, you got to commit to it, because if you don't commit to it, you might it, it might not get better, right? Right. That's why I like... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to talk about anxiety openly because I want to like get better at it, you know, get better at being in social situations because I realize like, I, even though I feel like an introvert, I still like to be out. I don't I like don't to be the center of attention. Introvert talk. You're not an introvert. What is it? This You're is not, why, let me bro. tell you why. why just am I from not? my perspective though, you probably are for real, mm-hmm. but just from my perspective, you're not. That's why? just me. Because you love being out, you love going out, you love doing things, you love talking to people. When I'm around, remember that's my experience. That's my experience with you is when I'm around. Obviously, I talk to you when I'm not around, so I know. You know, I know the reality of it. You be chilling, <laughs> and like when, when you're around, if I'm doing yeah. like a one-on-one talk, I, I I feel comfortable because I'm like, all right. If anything, I could just go to the bathroom, and you could take, you could, fin- you, could you know, you gonna talk. People gonna yeah, talk. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. So when it's just me or some like people who don't understand how anxiety works, it's more like I, I'm I don't want to talk now. You know I don't want to. I just don't. I lose the desire to even fin- finish any conversations. You know. Trying to go to the bar, watch some basketball. Yeah, you want to see if anybody yeah, in New York. Go. Anybody in New York? Um, uh, okay, guys, we're about to go. Um, if you guys are in uh, New York, where Queens. are we at? We're in Queens. We're about to go to. I actually don't know where we're going, but we're about to go somewhere and watch basketball. And hopefully listen to Drake's new album if, if they got it, because it's a great album. Um, so yeah, if you guys are around, you know where to go. Let us know. Um, if not, we're about to go hang out. Peace.